Well, here we are at part seven of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Mandolin. I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos so far. And now that we've got the basics down, we're gonna spend the next few lessons checking out some essential mandolin embellishment techniques and how to use them for old time and bluegrass songs. And first up, one of the most common embellishment techniques that we use on the mandolin is something called a hammer-on. Goes something like this. And as you can see there, I'm only playing the string once with the pick here, but I'm getting two notes out of the mandolin by hammering on with my left hand here. And it may be a little bit challenging to make the second note of the hammer on ring out and sustain the way we want to, but the real trick here is to stick the landing with your left hand. Make sure that you maintain pressure with your finger as soon as you make contact with the string. Otherwise, if you don't hold down the string hard enough, or you lift your finger off too soon, it's gonna create a gap in the sound and it won't sound quite as nice. Another temptation here is to do the hammer on really quick. And we wanna avoid that because the first note of the hammer on is also really important. We wanna hear that open A string loud and clear before hammering on with our index finger there. In fact, if you see the transcription here, we have an eighth note on the A string and an eighth note on the second fret of the A string. And we wanna make sure that that open A rings out for a full eighth note first. And one more consideration with the hammer-ons is what to do with our right hand while we're hammering on with the left hand, right? And we wanna make sure that our right hand is still alternating in time with the music. So we're gonna move our hand down for this hammer-on, and then we're gonna keep moving our hand upwards even though we're not applying the pick to the strings. That way we're setting ourselves up for the next downstroke on the next beat. And the last thing here is that these hammer-ons can happen in a number of places, right? Here we're hammering on from our open A string to our index finger, but you can also hammer on from one finger to the next, right? Try hammering on from your index finger to your middle finger, from the second fret to the fourth fret. Or another variation would be to hammer on from your index finger to your ring finger, right? Try hammering on from the second fret of your A string to your fifth fret with your ring finger. And one more common variation is hammering on from your middle finger to your ring finger. So plant your middle finger on the fourth fret of the A and try to hammer on with the ring finger on the fifth fret now. So in order to keep all that straight and to build up muscle memory for all these variations, I've whipped up a few hammer-on exercises for us to try out. You can find these exercises written out on page 20 of our companion ebook that's over on Patreon, but I'll pull them up on screen so we can follow along together. So for this first exercise, we're gonna practice hammering on from our open string to our index finger on the second fret across all four sets of strings. It goes something like this. Nice, well let's try that together now. And this repeats. Our second hammer-on exercise here is gonna work your index finger and your middle finger now. So now we're gonna be hammering on from the second fret on your index finger to the fourth fret on your middle finger across all four sets of strings. Something like this. Then we repeat. All right, now we're gonna work on that motion between our index finger and our ring finger. Again, this one's a little bit harder, but we're gonna hammer on from our index finger on the second fret to the fifth fret on your ring finger across all sets of strings now. One more time. Nice, and just one more exercise now where we move from our middle finger to our ring finger. So we'll hammer on from the fourth fret to the fifth fret across all four sets of strings now. And again. Nice, well let's try this embellishment out over a real piece of music now. I'm gonna show you how to play a classic old time and bluegrass fiddle tune called The Girl I Left Behind. Check it out.
All right, this tune is in the key of G major, just like that first tune we learned, Moonshiner. And you'll notice that we're using the exact same three chords that we use for that song too. We have G, we have C, and we have D. And since you're already familiar with these chords and a couple strum patterns, I'm gonna leave it up to you to practice these chords on your own. So try it out, and when you're ready, let's come over to the melody and check out what's going on. So first up, if you're unfamiliar with that term fiddle tune that I used earlier, that's just a catch-all phrase that denotes any instrumental tune that we play in bluegrass and old-time music. We actually already learned one already in this course. Remember Buffalo Gals from a few lessons back? Same idea here. And even though some of these fiddle tunes have words to them, they're usually played as instrumental pieces like this. And let's come over to the transcription now and check out a few things about this fiddle tune. So you'll find this on page 21 of our companion ebook and right off the bat, you'll notice a few things that might look familiar, right? We actually have the exact same structure as we had for Buffalo Gals. We have this A section that's eight measures long with repeats. Then we have a B section that's also eight measures long and repeats as well. The only difference here is at the end of each section, we have these little brackets with the numbers one and two, right? What that's letting us know is the first bracket is our first ending and the second bracket is our second ending. So here's how this works. We're gonna start out the tune, play through those first eight measures of the A section. We'll play that first ending, hit the repeats, come back to the beginning of the section again, and play through that A one more time, but now on the second time, we're gonna skip over the first ending and play the second ending. So same idea with the B section here. We have a first ending, which brings us back to the top of the B section, and then the second ending really brings the song to a close. And one more thing about the form of these fiddle tunes and all the songs we're working on in this series is that you can repeat the song again and again. So once you play through the A section twice and the B section twice, you can come back to the beginning of the tune and just loop the whole form again and again and again. And that's exactly what happens at the Bluegrass Jam. But more on all that in future lessons. For now, let's just listen down to this song and we'll start breaking things down phrase by phrase. So our first phrase in the A section goes something like this. And you'll already notice that for this song, we're starting to mix up the eighth note and the quarter note rhythm. So we have to watch out with what's going on with our pick directions. And for this tune, we're gonna play all the quarter notes in the melody as downstrokes. And we're gonna alternate our pick down and up for all those eighth notes that are connected together by bars. So here for the first phrase, this is what we're gonna do with our right hand. Down, up, down, 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 up, down. And just watch out for that hammer on that we have here from the open string to the second fret of the A string. So try that first phrase out a few times and when you're ready, let's come over to phrase two. So the pick directions here will be down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, down. And we've got another hammer on here from our middle finger on the third fret of the A to the fifth fret with our ring finger. All right, check out the third phrase here and you'll notice that it's exactly the same as the first, right? So no problem. All right, and for the last two measures of the section here, this is what some people call the turnaround phrase because it helps us get back to the beginning of the A section, right? All right, let's try that out and here are the pick strokes for this phrase. So we have down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down. All right, when you have all those phrases down separately, let's try stitching them together now and playing this A section once through with the backing track to see what it feels like. A one, two, three, four. All right, now onto the B section, and I think you'll find this section even easier. Here's our first phrase. So we have all quarter notes, except for those two eighth notes leading into the beginning of the B section, right? So here are the pick strokes. Down, up, down, 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 down. A lot of downs, right? Right, but for this next phrase, we have a lot of eighth notes, so we'll be doing a lot of alternating with our pick. Check this out. Yeah. 
Here are the pick directions for this phrase now. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Well, once you got to this point, check this out. The last line of our B section is exactly the same as the last line of the A section. So you already know the entire tune. Congrats. Here's that last line of the B section again, just to review. All right, let's come over to that backing track now and try this B section once through as well. All right, now it's time to try out this entire song. We're gonna come back over to this backing track and play the whole form, which is A, A, B, B. And like I said, this whole form repeats. If you want to, you can head over to our Patreon page, download the MP3 backing tracks for this song and all the songs we're looking at so you can keep playing it again and again as many times as you want to. But for now, let's just try it once through together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, there you have it, that's the hammer on. That's a technique we're gonna use in a lot of tunes coming up in this series. And for the next couple lessons, we're gonna check out a couple other embellishment techniques that are also pretty common on this instrument. Next up for part eight, we're gonna check out another embellishment called the pull off, which is kind of the opposite of a hammer on. And I'll show you how to use it over a classic bluegrass song called Will the Roses Bloom. So that's what's coming up. Thanks again for the likes and the subscribes here. Thanks for the patronage over on Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.